All right. Here we have the breadboard version of this project. This is uh, recommended to set this up first just to kind of get an idea of how things are connected. Uh, right now, as you can see, this LED is on. This is uh, indicating that the heat is on, the switch is on. And I don't know if you can see everything here, but uh, basically this is some 5 volt power. I just took a USB cable and stripped it and that's providing 5 volts of power. That's separate from the power here on the ESP. Uh, power here is being converted to 3.3 uh, volts. So this power that's going for the LED is, is only for the LED. Everything else is being powered off the ESP board including the DHT22 sensor. So this is just to show that you can do all of this using 3.3 uh, volts. Uh, you know, this doesn't have to be 5 volts. This, like for example, in my pump house, I'm controlling 110 AC through this switch. So, um, and I'm also using 5 volts um, out out in the uh, pump house because I've got 5 volts coming in. Uh, I went ahead and set it up that way just to make sure this uh, relay was going to flip. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, you should be able to see everything here. Let's see if we can get the uh, heat to go off. I'll warm up the sensor a little bit and see if we can actually get this to turn off. Um, yeah, there we go. Just turned off. So works and uh, yeah that's it. I don't know if you can see everything really well here but there's a resistor here for the LED so it doesn't burn out with the 5 volts. Uh, we have a transistor here so 3 volts is going to one end of the transistor coming out the other end going to the relay which is then connected to ground so when this uh, fires turns on the uh, the transistor it allows energy to throw go through the relay which causes the coil to flip and activates this separate circuit anyways uh, hope this helps um, have fun all right I'm about to finish this guy up by putting some hot glue on the back of this circuit which will insulate everything and uh, kind of secure things a little bit and just prevent things from shorting out. As you can see there's some bare exposed wire and since we're running 110 through it right here we want to make sure it's as sealed up as possible otherwise you know if these metal contacts uh, touch some metal or a rack gets in there and starts chewing things because it's in my pump house um, that could be a problem. So I'm just going to show you one of the things I do. I'm just going to take some hot glue here and squirt it all over real quick. I don't run out of my glue sticks here. this another try. I ran out of glue right as I started so I had to run and get some more. So hopefully that won't be a huge problem since we've got some glue that's already dried up on there. Put a whole bunch of this stuff on. Really get it nice and Cover it up with this hot glue, which will make a real nice backing. Sit down nice and flat. Nice surface. Get everything secure and insulated. Alright, looks like I'm running out on this one as well. Go ahead and Put another one in. Make 
sure you have these things handy. <laughs> Unlike me. Right. There we go. Looking pretty good. I think I got all the metal contacts covered. Now I'm going to squish it onto my tape. Trying to flatten it out real good. Right. Let's do it. Alright, just squish it down real good there. And let it dry on that tape. Really mash it down. Get it to flatten out. You kind of want it to see it squish out on the sides like it is up here. And then I probably could have even used a little bit more glue. But we'll just uh, see how that works. Go ahead and let it dry for a while come back and uh, peel it off all right so I've given this about five or ten minutes to dry and I can kind of feel the little bit that's sticking out here it feels pretty dry so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, peel this guy off and see what we got here As you can see tapes coming right off And there we have it. Nice little solid backing on the other side. And all the metal is pretty much all sealed up so that uh, things aren't going to short out. And make it a lot harder for any rats or anything in my pump house to bite into it. So now all I got to do is cut off the excess here. As you can see, I could have used even more just to make it like an, a nice square cutoff, but uh, you know, this is okay too. All I gotta do is cut off a little bit right here with a uh, X Acto knife, or some sort of sharp blade, and I'm good to go. All right, just wanted to go over a couple more things here. Uh, you might be wondering why I've got two USB cables connected. Well, this one uh, is connected directly to the ESP board, and this is basically for data. This is so I can actually read serial data uh, and do programming and upload code to this thing. Um, it is not needed for normal operation. Normal operation is uh, powered by this cord here, which is just 5 volts. Now, I could have done the whole thing. Uh, just using this, which is 3.3 uh, volts. This is a 3 volt relay, and this will operate off of 3 volts, but it will also work with 5. And I also found, I did some breadboard testing uh, with a 3 volt version. I found that the relay was a little bit sluggish. Um, and so what I wanted to do is separate that. I didn't want to use this as a power supply for the relay. Uh, and since I've already got 5 volts coming in here, what I did was there's, there's a little transistor underneath this thing. It is connected the uh, 5 volts to the transistor. And uh, basically, when the uh, switch is flipped through one of these pins, it uh, turns that transistor on, which allows 5 volts to pass to the uh, 3 volt relay here. Now this, this thing can handle more than 3 volts, it can handle like 10, 12 volts. And using 5 volts uh, makes that coil much more responsive, it just springs right on and, and there's no problems with that there. So that's why I wired it this way for normal operation, it's just using 5 volts. And one more thing I wanted to talk about this little connection here. <clears throat> when, when you make a 
cut in your wire. Obviously, you don't want this thing to be plugged in. Uh, this is 110 voltage, and it's, you know, it's dangerous, just as dangerous as a power outlet. Now, underneath this tape here, you can't really see it, but there's a knot, and the reason for that knot is basically just to allow some extension here. If you make a cut in that cord, you know, it's, it's going to look something like this. Here's another cable I'm working on. But when you make that cut, you see these ends are touching each other, all right? So if you were to plug it into something, you know, kind of like you see down here, you're going to have all this tension. Like if you pull on the ends of this wire now, because you've got this little loop, you're going to have tension and it's going to pull. See, you're going to have tension and it's going to pull on these guys. See how this loop is? So if you're to pull on these ends, it's going to try and pull these guys right out of your connection here which is not good so you know you wouldn't be able to put much tension on this so the way I got around that is tie a little knot and I'll show you hand over hand type of knot yeah, just get it down nice and close there alright Alright, so now that there's a knot in here, when you pull on this, the tension is on the knot instead of on these wires that are going to be connected to your relay. And it gives you a little slack, a little playroom to plug them in. So that's just a little tip you can use if you're going to connect this to a extension cord. Alright, thanks. All right, uh, I'm showing you how I've got this thing in use. Um, you can see my pipes there, my pump over on the lower right corner. You can see uh, two lamps, uh, one over by the pump, the well, and one in the center of the picture there, and some pipes off to the left. Uh, these pipes froze, and I was having problems with that. Uh, I used to have a little block thing over here on the outlet to control a, these lights, but it failed. And the pipes for us. So I built my own using an ESP 826612E and a transistor relay, a couple things, and a DHT22 temperature humidity sensor. Anyways, I wanted to show you uh, how I actually have it in use. I've been testing it like this now for... Ooh, almost a month or so and it's been working great.